Hello, good evening. How are you? Okay, thank you for being on time. Jensi, Claudia, Diego, Jose Francisco, Jose Jovito, Jose Isaias, Eliu. Thank you for being on time. We're about to start the class. Just let me see here. Okay, today we are going to start a week three. And we almost finished, right? So actually next next week will be the last one. So we almost um see all of the information here. We almost complete the the section, okay? So let me know. Did you practice or did you have your work in the section? Tienen preguntas de la sección tres? Yes, teacher. Okay, we're going to solve it. Parece que aquí mandaron algo en en el grupo. Eh, no sé si ustedes ya lo revisaron. Dice que ya revisaron y quienes completaron la sección tres. Como pueden ver, esta sección o este módulo en inglés avanzado 2 solo tiene cuatro secciones. Entonces, para completar el mes, yo la he dividido así. Pero si ustedes eh, quieren avanzar y quieren terminar las cuatro secciones y tienen tiempo para hacerlo, no hay problema. Este, también había alguien ahí que dijo que no aparecía en la lista. Así que este, ya lo vamos a reportar. Si ustedes no aparecen en la lista... Por favor, también avíseme para poder este, reportarlo. Ok, ahora, ¿tienen alguna pregunta de esta sección, de la sección 3 de Information Age? ¿Ya trabajaron en esa sección? Yes, teacher. The, the exercise 3.4, please. Let me see here. Exercise three and what part? Three point four. Three point four. Okay, remember remember that we are going to, to check this information today. So you shouldn't have any, if you have questions, you still have questions, let me know, okay? Let me see here. Okay, so we have here knowledge check. Instructions, complete the sentences with the correct form of the verb in parentheses. Sometimes more than one answer is possible. No capital letters or periods are needed. So is this the... The present perfect, right? So, for example, uh, webcams use will be used or are going to be used, right? Thousands of computers already have been infected, right? Uh, this one, more freeware will be released, right? Será liberado, will be released. Thousands of blocks are being started, right? This is the passive voice, I guess. Recently, more shot, more hotspots have been set up, right? Nowadays, teen chat rooms are being monitored. These days, podcasts are being downloaded. Soon, viruses will be created and webcams will be used. So this is the... Uh, passive voice, la voz pasiva. So, I don't know if you have any specific question, alguna pregunta en específico de alguna oración. In my case, uh, the number three and six. Number three. Okay, thousand of blocks are being started, right? Están siendo uh, iniciados o comenzados, right? Are being studied, right? On all sort of topics every day. So in this case, it's like saying 
Townsend o a blog sta, are, are starting, right? Are starting, right? Es como el present continuous, pero en voz pasiva. Recuerden que la voz pasiva se puede dar en todos los tiempos. Y la número seis, these days podcasts are being downloaded. It's the same, right? Um, like many people are downloading, right? Podcasts or are being downloaded. Ya vamos a ver las reglas del passive voice, pero este sería para estas preguntas. This will be the answers for these questions, right? Six. It's like the passive voice, but the present continues. But in passive voice. It says a one... One more, more than one answer is 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 uh, accepted in some of them. En algunas sí tienen más respuestas, ¿verdad? Por ejemplo, en la primera solo es una, pero en la segunda puede ser will be released or is going to be released, right? Is going to be released. En la número siete también son dos opciones. Will be created or are going to be created. Y en la número 8, will be used or are going to be used. Es el, para la voz pasiva, pero con el going to, ¿verdad? Porque también está hablando del pasado, de, perdón, del futuro. Will be created or going to, ¿verdad? Entonces, son, es la voz pasiva, ya la vamos a revisar. Por si tienen preguntas con eso. Any other question with the platform or any other problem that you have had? Preguntas o problemas que hayan tenido? Sure. Yes. Y con la pregunta que estaba mal, creo que era de la primera sección que dijo que le iba a reportar, ya, ya no sé si o no sé si se cambió. Esa era de la sección 2, ¿verdad? Section 2. No me recuerdo, pero había una que no la agarraba. Ajá, exactly. Se, yo lo reporté, pero si no está aún resuelto, lo voy a volver a reportar. Creo que aquí la he de tener yo. I think that I have it here, but I will check it. And if it is not fixed, because this will be happening in the future, right? I think this one now, this one is, is the part 1.2. I will report it again. I will report it again. It's the part one, section one. One point two. Okay, I will check what happened to it because I think that it's still the same, right? But let me see here. Section one. Now it's it's fixed already. Yes, it's fixed. You see? Now it accepted. Okay. So if you still have problems with any of these parts, uh, let me know, okay? Okay, do you have any other question with section three? Or I do not know any other problem with any other section? Okay, remember that you, if you still have problems, uh, let me know. Aquí mandaron un reporte supuestamente de alguien que aún no había hecho la sección 3 y que había haberse la terminado, debía de haber terminado, pero yo lo he dividido así, pero si ustedes quieren pueden avanzar, ¿verdad? Eh, hay personas que no aparecen, así que revisen en el grupo para que ustedes puedan, puedan ver esa información. Okay, do you have any other questions or can we begin with the class? I think that we had a, 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 a homework, right? Who did the homework? ¿Quién hizo la tarea? Who did the homework? Well, what was the homework about? Do you remember that? No homework? Yes, me... uh, uh, an uh -huh. to write an some anecdote. to write a story, or a story or an anecdote. I, I, I did, it. I did. It. You did it. Okay, very good. So we're going to check it right now. Let me see here because I think that I have it okay. here with one, with two. 
Exactly. We have to use, uh, you have to, to write an anecdote, right? Let me see here. And what tenses do we have to use? Uh, infinitive and, and gerunds and pass, a past participle. Exactly. Infinitive, gerunds, past participles. Okay, very good. So you did the the homework, right, Olive? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Can I, and can I... Yes, you can share it if you have a presentation or something, or if you want to uh tell me the information, you can tell me right now your anecdote. Okay. My uh, my it's my story, my a short story, it's a true story. It's a true story, okay. Yes. Okay. May I? Okay, this May 2nd at 11 o'clock in the morning, I went to supervi su super supervi supervive the work of the laborers, of the laborers, the people who work for me, uh, to help them, I prepared to cut a bamboo stick using the chainsaw. The bamboo stick was bent and was pressing upward. And when I did the cut, the pressure that toward the steam of the plant released pressure like a catapult. And the point of the road gave me a tremendous blow to my face. The blow was so strong that it left me unconscious, unconscious, unconscious for a minute. The day laborers took me out of the play and had a bruise on my nose and I was bleeding. Then they took me to the village clinic and gave me first aid. You, you can see me. Can you see me how I am? Really? That, yes. And so that happened recently? Yes, this, this today at 11 o'clock. Today. And you yes. were unconscious? Yes, one minute or more, I, I think. I I lose my I I my my status, uh my yes, I was unconscious. Uh -huh. I, I, and how I do you feel up. right now? Yeah, yes, go ahead. Well, I don't feel I don't feel very very good. I don't feel very good. I feel I feel like um like with hurt is hurting me and <clears throat> and it's uh, it's bleeding it's bleeding I <clears throat> I don't know I need I need a, a, a to check me with another uh, a hospital tomorrow. You need to go, but I do feel I do feel okay right now to to be in the class. Yes. Yes, I I am going to I am going to to be listening, uh -huh. but I don't I don't I don't like to be talking. And I, I I if you permit to put out my video camera because I don't feel very good. Yes, obviously, yeah, no problem, Eli. Yes, okay. sorry for that. Sorry, <laughs> and it's a it's a you did your homework yet? Yeah, it's true, but. Sorry that that happened to you today. Yes, yes. Yeah, thanks God I am alive. You, while we have life, we have hope. Yes, exactly. And thank God that you, you're you're stable right now. You're not conscious or anything. That's good. Yeah. Okay. okay, thank you, Elio. Thank you. And uh hope you feel better for uh tomorrow, right? If something happened, just okay. let us know. Okay. Okay, thank you. And let's see, who else did their homework? Somebody else? Yes, I did, but I don't have it. 
at this moment because I'm uh, connected from my cell phone, so I cannot see the, the homework, but I did it. <laughs> okay, okay, no problem. Uh, we can share it later, no problem. So yesterday, or actually last week, what we were talking about was how we combine different tenses, right? And that's why I asked you to to write like a an, an story about yourselves and different things, right? For example, um, this was the topic. Let me see here. I will share right now. So this was the topic, um, like how we can uh, how we can combine the simple past and the past perfect, right? And if you remember, we were talking about how something happened at the beginning doesn't work for me. Okay, I will check that later. Uh, so that something that happened at the beginning and then something interrupted that action right or how we can um talk about something that happened at the beginning and then another action that happened after that this is an example after she had divorced she found her love life so after she had divorced what happens first right she had divorced and then she found her love life so that's how we can um combine the past perfect with the past simple, right? When we are talking about a story like Liu, like it was a really bad story uh, because he got hurt, right? Uh, with a bamboo uh, tree on his face and he was unconscious. So um, that's how we can um, use it, right? First, I uh, he had been unconscious until he felt better, right? For example, no, he had he had uh, he wasn't conscious right so this is how we can um combine two things this is just um these are these are the exercises and this is an, an anecdote right so this is a review for you to check it right it says, use the past perfect to describe a sequence of events and to show that the past perfect took place before another action in the same sentence. Simple past is used when there is a clear indication to the time in the past when the action was taking place. So let me make it bigger. So for example, uh, we use it to talk about completed and finished past events. For example, the simple past, right? I watched a film last night. I didn't go to school on Monday. Did you go surfing last week? And this is the structure, right? For affirmative sentences, negative sentences, and interrogative sentences. Then we have here irregular verbs, right? We use uh, the regular verbs, verbs plus ed, and irregular verbs. And we use here the past perfect simple or simple uh, the past perfect, we use it to express the idea that something occurred before an other action. Another action in the past. I had seen a film. I hadn't gone to school. Had you done surfing? So this is the structure for affirmative, negative, and interrogative. And this is how we uh, combine them, right? For example, when we arrived to the theater, they had sold all the tickets, Cuando llegamos, ya los habían vendido los tickets, ¿verdad? Cuando llegamos al teatro, right? Entonces, cuando hicimos eso, ya eso ya había pasado antes. So, that's how we combine the tenses. For example, Jane had read a lot about the elephants before she went to the zoo. I had met him before he was famous. Everyone had gone when Alice arrived to the party. He had lived there for three years when we met. How much had he drunk before you saw him? They didn't watch the film because they hadn't read the book. 
So as you can see, we can combine it in different ways, in different sentences, and we can use when and before, right? Before. To combine it, like to express that one thing happened before another one. Questions about this? Preguntas? This is about last week, right? Esto ya lo vimos la semana pasada, but this is just a review, just in case you had questions. Okay, somebody else uh, did this homework, like uh, to tell an anecdote? No? Because if you did it, no problem, right? I know that you're kind of busy, you're working all the time and everything. But what we can do is just to practice, right? We are going to practice to finish these topics, and then we are going to start with section three. Um, it says telling an anecdote. In this conversation, we can see how they combine both uh, tenses, right? The simple past and the present perfect to tell a story. We are going to read it. I don't know if you can help me, uh, two of you. Volunteers, two volunteers. Yeah. Okay, Jose Francisco and... Oh. I can. Okay. I can do it. Okay, you can be Sarah and Jose Francisco will be Tom, okay? Okay. Okay, you can go ahead, please. Okay. Hey, do you hear about that time when I met John Travolta? No, tell me. Well, it was a few years ago. My friends and I were walking down the street in Hollywood and suddenly, this black limo pulls up beside us. Wow, that sounds exciting. Yeah. So we're standing there wondering what's going on. And I'll put John Travolta. Shut up. What do you do? Well, he was really friendly. He asked us if we wanted to go for a ride with him. So, of course, we said yes. Are you serious? You went for a ride with John Travolta? Yep. We drove around Hollywood for ages, talking about oh. movies and stuff. It was amazing. That is incredible. Did you take any pictures of anything or anything? Unfortunately, no. We were too starstruck to think about taking photos, but it's a memory that will stay with me forever. I can imagine. You have had some pretty cool experiences, Tom. Yeah, I guess I had. Like the other time when I visited New York. Oh, don't even get me started on your travel stories. Okay, very good, perfect. So as you can see, most of the time um, in a conversation, we use the simple past, right? Something that we did. But over there at the end of the conversation, it says, right, you've had some pretty cool experiences, Tom. So we use the present perfect there. And also we can use other tenses, right? Not only uh, those two. So do you have any questions about this um, conversation? Preguntas, new um, words. Or, yes. Uh, what does uh, out pops means? Out pops like it appeared right suddenly. Mm, okay. Out pops. Yes. It, it drove around. Drive around is like driving and like probably going nowhere, right? Like driving around. Okay. Como conducir, right? Yes. Drive around. Mm. Another one? Okay, perfect. So actually that was um, the conversation for just to check these tenses, right? And here I have a listening. This is the last exercise that we are going to practice here.
and this one it combines also uh both tenses right both tenses so we're going to check it right now what you are going to do is just to, we are going to read it or first we are going to to listen to it and you just have to complete it right and if you don't listen to the words it's okay no problem so we have three phone calls right this is like um they are going to explain different different uh places where they have been in brazil in the amazon and we have three phone calls so we are going to play it and we are going to go one by one and we are going to complete the phone calls okay so this is just the last exercise for this section so no worries let's see it's 6 9 30 okay One point forty five. Part one. Nee. How long has Justin been going out with Brittany? One point fifty one. Phone call one. Everything went wrong. I only managed half a day on Wednesday, the first day. Sorry. Okay, first, uh, we are going to read first this thing because in this case, uh, we are going to understand better the phone calls, okay? I thought that he was going to read everything, but no. So, I need two volunteers, please. Uh, the first person who is able to read the first paragraph says, Helen Skelton hopes to become the first woman to kayak down the Amazon River. So, I need someone to read from Helen Skelton until uh, Brazil. I will. Okay, Porfirio, go ahead, please. Helen Skelton is a 26 years old TV host and Blue Peter, a show for young people. She has never been afraid of challenge. Last year, she became the second woman to complete the 78 mile ultra marathon in Namibia running the three consecutive marathons in 23 hours and 15 and uh, 15 minutes but when blue peter decided to do something to raise money for the charity sport relief which sponsor protect projects around uh yeah which sponsor projects around the world skeleton said that she wanted to uh, an even bigger challenge so they suggest that kayak 1998 miles down the Amazon from Noda in Peru to Almerin in Brazil. Very good. Perfect. And uh, let's see the next, the, the last paragraph, please. Who else? Me. Okay. Okay, Mercy, uh, you can... You can um, read the next one, sorry. Uh, Raphael, go ahead, please. This is a very rich trip. There are no roads and no towns, only mm -hmm. rainforests and the river, which is sometimes more than 24 miles, while um, infested with, uh, with cockroaches. If she gets sick, it will take around 11 hours to fly her to a hospital. Okay, thank you. So, Mercy, you are going to read phone call one, but first we are going to listen to it. Everybody will do it, right? Everybody will do this exercise, but you will read it, okay, Mercy? No problem. And remember that this is uh, like a trip, like very dangerous trip that she is going to take. And she, during the call, she will explain what happened to her, right? She will tell her story, like her anecdote, right? So as you can see, it's kind of the, uh, difficult. So we are going to read or listen to what happened. And Mercy, please, uh, then you are going to, to read phone call one, okay, with the responses. Okay. Okay. Let me play it here. If you need me to repeat it, I will repeat it. 
I'm going out with Brittany. 1.51 Phone call 1 Everything went wrong. I only managed half a day on Wednesday, the first day, and on Thursday we started late, so I'm already behind. I've been suffering from the heat. It's absolutely boiling, and the humidity is 100% at lunchtime. I went the wrong way, and I had to paddle against the current. I was exhausted. They asked me, do you want to give up? But I said no, because I've also been having a wonderful time. There are pink dolphins, pink, not grey, that come close to the boat. I think that if I can do 62 miles a day, then I can make it. Phone call 2 I've been on the Amazon for a week now, and I've been paddling for six out of the seven days. Okay, perfect. So now we're going to read uh, the first one, right? Did you get the responses or do you want me to play it again? I Did got you it. The, you got it. Okay, perfect. So I will play it here. I will present it again. So read it, please. Everything went wrong. I only managed half a day on Wednesday, the first day. And on Thursday, we started late. Uh, so I'm already behind. I've been suffering from the heat. It's absolutely boiling. And the humidity, it's 100% at lunchtime. I went the wrong way. And I had to paddle against the current. I was exhausted. They asked me, do you want to give up? But I said no, because I've also been having a wonderful time. There are pink dolphins, pink, not gray, that come close to the boat. I think that if I can do 62 miles a day, then I can make it. Very good, perfect, very good. I'm already... Um... What was the first one? Sorry. Tired, right? Behind. Behind. So I'm already behind. It's absolutely boiling, right? I was exhausted. And do you want to give up? Very good. Perfect. And very good pronunciation. Now we are going to listen to number one. Um, Sorry, we are going to listen to number two, phone call two, right? This is the phone call two. Let's see. This one. So it says, Helen has only been kayaking once before in her life. So she has been training for hours a day last week. She arrived at the Amazon in Peru after two days of kayaking. She made the first of her phone calls. So this is phone call number two. Uh, who wants to read phone call two? Volunteers? Who wants to read number two? First, I will play it first, right? And then you will read it. Somebody who hasn't participated yet. No one? Okay, I will play it first. And if someone wants to, to read it, uh, raise your hand, okay? Okay, I will play the second one. But I said no, because I've also been having a wonderful time. There are pink dolphins, pink, not grey, that come close to the boat. I think that if I can do 62 miles a day, then I can make it. Phone call two. I've been on the Amazon for a week now, and I've been paddling for six out of the seven days. The river is incredibly wide, and it's very hard to paddle in a straight line. The water is so brown that I can't see my paddle once it goes under the surface. It looks like melted chocolate. I start at 5.30 in the morning, and I paddle for at least 10 hours from 5.30 a.m. until dark, with only a short break for lunch. My hands have been giving me problems. I have big blisters. I now have them bandaged in white tape. I'm usually on the water for at least 10 hours. It's boring at times and exciting at others. 
I listen to music on my iPod. I've been listening to Don't Stop Me Now by Queen to inspire me. Phone call three. I haven't been feeling very well this week. The problem is heat exhaustion. Okay, now we have phone call two. Who wants to read phone call two with their responses? Me, teacher. Okay, Elie, go ahead, please. Okay, phone call two. I've been in the Amazon for a week now, mm -hmm. and I've been paddling for six out of the seven days. The, ri the river is incredibly wide, and it's very hard to paddle in a straight line. The water is brown that I can't see my paddle once it goes under the surface. It look it look like melted chocolate. Mm -hmm. I started at 5.30 in the morning and pedal for at least 10 hours from 5.30 a.m. until dark with only a short break for lunch. My hand have been giving me problem I have been blistered. I now have them bandaged in white tape. I'm usually on the water for at least 10 hours. It is very, very well at time and exciting and other. I listen to music on my iPod. I've been listening to Don't Stop Me Now, my queen to inspire me. Very good, perfect, very good. It's boring at times and it's exciting in others. Very good. Now we're going to finish with phone call three, right? We are going to listen to it and then we are going to check the responses, right? Let's see. I listen to music on my iPod. I've been listening to Don't Stop Me Now by Queen to inspire me. Phone call three. I haven't been feeling very well this week. The problem is heat exhaustion. They say it's because I haven't been drinking enough water. I've been traveling 62 miles a day, which is my target. But yesterday, after 52 miles, I was feeling sick and my head was aching and I had to stop and rest. Very good. Who wants to read the last, the last phone call? Oh, me. Okay, go ahead, please. Okay, I haven't been feeling very well this week. The problem is heat exhaustion. Oh, sorry, I need to remove. Oh, so, sorry. The problem is heat exhaustion. They say it's because I haven't been drinking enough water. I've been traveling 62 miles a day, which is my target. But yesterday, after 52 miles, I was feeling sick and my head was aching, and I had to stop the rest. Very good, perfect, perfect. How, how do you pronounce, uh, the problem is heat exhaustion, how do you pronounce? Yes, heat exhaustion, exhaustion. exhaustion. Yes, exhaust, like with an O, right, exhaustion. Exhaustion, okay. Thank yes, you. heat exhaustion, very good, heat exhaustion. Uh, very good, very good. Actually, uh, everybody did very well. This is the complete phone call, right? And as you can see, the first one was behind, boiling, exhausted, exhausted, upright, white, chocolate, puddle, boring, feeling, and sick. Do you have any question about uh, the phone calls? Any new word? Any pronunciation? Anything? Or you understood everything? So everything is clear? No problems? Okay, what is the meaning of... Um, yes, go ahead, Mercy. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I don't know, this, this word is new for me. Paddle, paddle, I don't know how to pronounce it. Paddle, yeah, paddle. Paddle is what she's doing right now in this picture. You see? She's paddling, right? 
in the kayak. Oh, it's yeah. It's like so, a sport. Yeah, it's like the sport, but, but actually it's it remar. Yes, it's like the action, right? Remar, paddling. So I have to paddle. Remar. Oh. Oh. Another one? Any other? Blisters? You know, right? Bandage? You know, right? The calambres? Blisters? Or oh no, blisters is for example when you do a lot of things with your hands and you have blisters oh, in your hands. Oh, okay. como, uh, como ampollas, right? Oh, okay. Ampollas. So it's it's like painful Blister. blisters, big blisters. Any other? No. Okay. Perfect. So we are going to finish right now with section two. Uh, remember to finish section three for this week and remember that uh, classes on Friday because yesterday was Labor Day. Hopefully you were able to, to rest, right? We are going to begin right now with section three. Let me see here. Because we still have around 20 minutes, so. Okay, I will explain to you what we are going to do right now. Uh, this will be, um, I don't know if you already have the previous presentation. Do you, do you, do you have it? Did I share it last week or not? Yes. Yes, right. Okay, perfect. So I will share this at the end on Friday. This one, you will have it on Friday in your, um, in the group. So this is the first objective. It says in this class, Participants will learn and practice using internet terms. So we have download, chat room, hotspot, blog, freeware, uh, webcam, podcast, spyware, instant messaging, and computer computer virus. Like, uh, did you do this or do you have any question about this? Like any question about these words and the definitions or everything is clear right, right now. Teacher, what, what's the meaning of hotspot? Hotspot. Um, it's for example, it's a place that has wireless internet access, right? That is a hotspot. It's for internet. It's a hotspot. What about, what about freeware? Como un modem. Es como un modem. Nosotros podemos obtener eh, internet eh, de alguna parte. Por ejemplo, your phone can be a hotspot. Su celular puede ser un hotspot, right? So you can provide internet to another, another person. A freeware. A freeware is a software that is available for free. Freeware. It's a software for free. Thank you. Okay, any other? I think that the rest are really, really uh, easy, right? It says here, I'm checking the chat right now, and it says, um, teacher, I need help with this part after section four. It will be like letter B and C. Section four, section four, okay. Exercise 1.2 doesn't work for me. Let's see. I just checked that and it seems that it's already, I, I, I have finished section three, but we are going to check section 1.2. Sorry. Section 1.2. Yes, because actually we had problems with that, right? It was not accepting any any answer so section 1.2 i guess it was three what you can uh write is it's often considered rude to ask someone's age so i will share this response the response sorry this one, and you can copy it, right? 
just in case. A veces es por cómo se escriben las cosas, a veces es el apostrophe. So I will share right now the response, right? That is the section, section 1.2. Okay, try that one and let me know if it is working. Is that is question three? Just in case. And uh section four, I I will if you have questions about section four, I will solve it tomorrow. So you can advance, right? You can continue with the exercises. Very good. Now, we are going to complete this um, vocabulary. Actually, what I brought here is another reading. I think that we are going to finish with this exercise. And also, about this vocabulary technology, right? So first, we are going to check this one, right? As you can see, we have a picture here and we have a different uh, technological items, right? So devices, right? Electronic devices. So uh, we have a mouse, speaker, USB cable, keyboard, a flash drive, a plug, a remote control, a screen, an outlet, a switch, an adapter, and headphones. So we already have number one, right? Number one is a switch. If you can see it here, it's here, right? It's a switch, like electricity to turn on the line and, and to turn off the light, right? So let's see, what is number two? Number two. What is number two? Can you see the, the image? Number two, two is a, an, ap, an adapter. An adapter? Mm, kind of. But you says that number two is an adapter. Okay, we're a going plug. to place uh -huh, a plug. A plug. Yes, right. A plug, right. It can be a cable, right? A, a cable to plug it in. Let's see. Three. What is number three, if you can see the image? Headphones. Headphones, very good, headphones, very good. Can be uh, also another word to say headphones is heads, right? Four, over there is a number four. What is number four? Remote control. A remote control. A remote control, a remote control, perfect. Five, what is number five? A screen. A screen, exactly. A monitor or a screen. Six, what is six? Keyboard. A keyboard. A keyboard. Keyboard, exactly, keyboard. Seven, what is seven? Mouse. Mouse. Mouse, exactly. Number eight. The speaker. The speaker. Speaker. Very good. Number nine. An flash drive. A flash drive. Exactly. A flash drive. Number ten. What is number ten? An adapter. An adapter an and 11. A USB cable. A USB cable and 12. An outlet. An outlet, very good, perfect. Very good, perfect. So those will be uh, the information that we have right now, the vocabulary, right? Perfect. So to finish, we are going to read just to check the pronunciation. Um, Tomorrow we are going to listen to it. We are going, I think that we are going to start like five minutes earlier. 
a las 7.55 to listen to this uh, reading. So you can check your uh, pronunciation or, well, if you want to, we can, we can do the opposite, but we are going to read it first because I want to listen to your pronunciation first. If you have questions about any of these uh, words, uh, let me know, okay? And we are going to look for it. So I need just five volunteers, right? Let's see, I need one volunteer who hasn't participated just to read this paragraph. Information overload. Gen Z, okay, Gen Z, read the first paragraph, please. Okay, the term. Is you tip the words information overload into Google, you will in, immediately get information overload more than seven million um, hits in uh, zero, zero, 005 seconds. Some of this information is interesting. For example, you learned that the phrase information overload was first used in 1970. Yes. Um, yes. Before the before the internet was invented. But much of the information is it not relevant or useful, relevant or useful. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, com companies and even more, of course, bloggers. Very good. Uh, obscure companies and even more obscure bloggers. Do you have any question about this paragraph? Preguntas? New words? What is the meaning of overload? What is the meaning of that? Like sobrecarga. Very good. Load, carga, ¿verdad? Overload, sobrecarga. So una information overload. Very good. So we have an overload. And it says uh, some of the words type, right? Type the words and also um, useful, right? Be careful with those words. Let's see, Gen Z, choose someone else to read this, the second paragraph from information to their health. Escoja alguien más, Gen Z. Choose someone else, Gen Z. Jensi, are you there? Okay, or any volunteer? Rosa Maria, very good. So read from information until their health, please. Okay. Information overload is one of the biggest irritations in modern life. There are new and expert websites to watch, emails that need to be answered. People who want to chat to chat with you online, and but in the real world, friend, friends, family, and co colleagues, colleagues, who has, colleagues who also have things to tell you at the world. Information overload is also causing problems. A recent survey has shown that many company managers believe that it has made their jobs less satisfying and has even affected their personal relationships outside work. Some of them also think that here is bad for their health. Very good, perfect. New words in this paragraph or everything is clear? Everything's clear? Okay, perfect. Now I need a volunteer for the next paragraph from clearly to internet, please. Me? Okay, go ahead, please. Yeah, clearly this, there is a problem. 
it is not only the increase in the quanti quanti quantity of information, it's also the fact that is everywhere, not just in the home and the workplace. Many people today do not go anywhere without their smartphones. There is no escape for the internet. From Very the internet. good. From the internet. Perfect, perfect. Now, I need another volunteer to read this one. Another volunteer? Me, teacher. Okay, Elia, go ahead, please. Okay, scientists have highlighted three big worries. First, information overload can make people feel anxious. Mm -hmm. There is too much to do and not enough time to do it. People end up multitasking, which can make them even more stressed. Second, information overload can make people less creative. Research sh shows that people are more likely to be creative in the, if they are allowed to focus on one, on one thing for some time without interruption. Third, information overload can make people less productive. People who multitask they much longer and make many more mistakes than people who do the same task one after another. Very how good. Do you, how do you pronounce multitasking? Is it correct? Yeah, multitask multitasking is correct. Multitasking. Okay. Very good. Perfect. And I think we have the last one. The last person, please. Can I? Okay, go ahead, please. What can be done about information overload? One solution is technological. There is now a computer program or app you can install called Freedom that disconnects you from the web at preset times. The second solution involves willpower. Turn off your cell phone and the internet from time to time. The manager of an IT company puts thinking time into his schedule when all his electronic devices are turned off so that he isn't disturbed. This might sound like common sense, but nowadays, although we have more information than ever before, we don't always have enough common sense. Very good, Jose Francisco. Perfect. Very good. I think that uh, we have finished. Uh... We are going to listen to the reading yesterday and we are going to check the pronunciation, okay? And we are going to try to understand what is information overload. Actually, I think it is it is clear. I think that most of you understood uh, the, the meaning, right? But we are going to practice it tomorrow just to check. And remember, if you have problems with a section three or section four, let me know. And also I will report your case, Anna. Uh, just to check if they, uh, what what's the problem? Right? What's the the reason you're not there in the list? And I will try to finish section four so you can finish it, just in case. Uh, tomorrow, if you have questions for section four, or the final exam, we are going to solve them. Okay, because right now the time is over. Uh, do you have any question right now or any other, uh, I don't know, concern? No? Okay, perfect. So I will see you tomorrow at, probably we are going to start a little bit earlier, 7, 7.55 probably. And um, then we can uh, finish all of the, all of your questions or if you have any, any uh, comment, we can cover it, okay? So thank you for being in time and I will see you tomorrow and have a good evening, okay? Good evening. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Good Bye. Night. Good night. Bye, Eliu. Get better.